Introduction to My Huayu Era in 1993 In early 1993, Jiang Xiaofeng, who had gained memories from his past life, participated in director Jiang Wen's debut work, Sunny Days, and embarked on a brilliant career in the entertainment industry. Chapter 1 Shaolin Temple One Martial Monk You are listening at NovelFull.audio Jiang Xiaofeng is an orphan. When he was 12 years old, he watched the movie Shaolin Temple and traveled thousands of miles from the southern countryside to come to Shaolin Temple to learn art. January 1, 1993 This is Jiang Xiaofeng's sixth New Year's Day at Shaolin Temple. Compared to when he first arrived six years ago, he has transformed from a naive little kid to a robust young warrior monk. That morning, Jiang Xiaofeng had a very, very long dream in her dream, Jiang Xiaofeng saw her past life. In his past life, Jiang Xiaofeng was known by the Dharma name Heng Yuan and had always been a monk in the Shaolin Temple monk group. It was not until his younger martial brother Huang Baoqiang became a well-known celebrity in 2004 with his silly character in the movie, No Thieves in the World, that he had the idea of going down the mountain. Some people say that, Shaolin Temple, has influenced a generation of Chinese people, and in that era, it trained half of the country's security personnel. This statement is absolutely true. After descending the mountain, Jiang Xiaofeng worked as a security guard and thug in bars and nightclubs, moved bricks to construction sites, practiced martial arts at Hengjian Film and Television City, coached a martial arts school, and even fought against a beloved girl at the top of Mount Hua. In 2012, Jiang Xiaofeng, who was unwilling to be ordinary, was introduced by a friend and went to Dunguan. In the midst of the sound of pretty boys, he lost himself and became a Dunguan boy. He was also appreciated by a wealthy lady who still had charm, and almost succeeded in landing the ship. After 2014, this city became bustling and devastated. After falling in love and completely parting ways with a wealthy lady, Jiang Xiaofeng also felt tired. Finally, in 2016, he chose to stay away from the hustle and bustle of the city and return to Shaolin Temple. Ha! Huh. Jiang Xiaofeng, who woke up from his dream, couldn't help but feel a bit dazed as he reminisced about the real and unforgettable memories he had just had in his dream. At this moment, the sunlight shone in like a beam of light, coming in from outside the window, but not all of it. It only came in a little bit and happened to shine on the poster attached to the wall. Jiang Xiaofeng looked up and saw that the woman on the poster was his favorite Xiangjiang Jade Lady, the leader. Zhou Huiman. In a sense, Zhou Huiman should be Jiang Xiaofeng's enlightenment teacher, who had a profound influence on him and often met him in his youthful and reckless dreams. As the saying goes, which girl doesn't embrace spring, and which young man doesn't fall in love? Jiang Xiaofeng has a junior brother named Xiao Peng who particularly likes the female celebrity Cheng Huilin in Xiangjiang. He even made a poisonous oath in front of him that he will never marry unless Cheng Huilin does. Xiao Peng is indeed a man. He did what he said because he couldn't marry Cheng Huilin and stayed at Shaolin Temple for a lifetime as a bachelor. Retrieving his thoughts, Jiang Xiaofeng recalled his past life in his dream, only feeling a wave of pain in his head. Perhaps everything came too suddenly, Jiang Xiaofeng needed time to sort out whether the long and real dream just now was real or not. Quickly, Jiang Xiaofeng came to a conclusion that if this dream were fake, he wouldn't suddenly have so many vivid memories and various experiences of ups and downs. If this dream is true, then he probably already understands what has happened to him, what he has experienced, in a more fashionable way, it is. He has been reborn through time travel. If it is really a time travel rebirth, then Jiang Xiaofeng already has a rough idea of what he should do next. The first thing to do is to go down the mountain. The second thing is to use the memory of future prophets to embark on a magnificent career, preferably with both fame and fortune. The third thing is to go to Xiangjiang to find Zhou Huiman and communicate with him with such wild thoughts, Jiang Xiaofeng fell asleep again. Sleeping in a daze, Jiang Xiaofeng heard a tender and urgent cry in his ear. Second senior brother, don't sleep anymore. The crew of Sentimental Shaolin Temple 
is coming to our Shaolin temple to pick actors. Jiang Xiaofeng woke up from his sleep, rubbed his sleepy eyes, and looked at his junior brother Huang Baoqiang in front of him, suddenly feeling unreal. Looking at the small, dark, freckled junior brother in front of him, in his own dream, he was able to become a well-known celebrity. Jiang Xiaofeng felt that all of this was unbelievable. Thinking of what Bao Chang had just said, Jiang Xiaofeng suddenly felt a sense of enlightenment, because in his dream memories, he did have a deep impression of the play, Sentiment of Shaolin Temple. If his dreams are true, then the director of the play, Love at Shaolin Temple, should be Li Chaoyong, who has directed Meng Fei's version of Flying Fox in Snowy Mountains, Wang Buzhao, who played Little White Dragon in the 86 version of Journey to the West, and Chen Farong, who won the Miss Xiang Jiang Championship in 1989. Jiang Xiaofeng felt that he needed to calm down because he already had a strong premonition that the memories in his dreams were likely to be real. In addition, Jiang Xiaofeng also knows that his junior brother Huang Baoqiang's dream is to become a Kung Fu star like Jet Li. Of course, Huang Baoqiang's dream is not only known to Jiang Xiaofeng, but almost every senior brother. Jiang Xiaofeng didn't want to delay Huang Baoqiang either, so he said, Baoqiang, you go first. I'll go later. I know second senior brother, then I'll go first. I'm not waiting for you. Huang Baoqiang, who was determined to become an actor, didn't talk to Jiang Xiaofeng and ran straight to the set. After Huang Baoqiang left, Jiang Xiaofeng did not rush to leave, but stayed in his small room and fell into deep thought again. Unlike Huang Baoqiang's junior brothers, Jiang Xiaofeng and his senior brother Su Pingjun, who arrived early and were members of the Shaolin Temple Monk Group, lived in a single room and did not have to be squeezed into a collective dormitory of more than 20 people. Generally speaking, a monk who can join a martial arts group indicates that they have reached a certain level of martial arts practice and can specialize in a unique skill, which can be used to perform for tourists or to perform in other places or foreign countries. The so-dot called skills are actually martial arts such as iron cloth shirt, drunken sword, drunken stick, eight-section brocade, monkey fist, etc. In the martial monk group, Jiang Xiaofeng specialized in practicing drunken sword because of his good body skills. In fact, what Jiang Xiaofeng most wants to learn is the Yi Jin Jing, because in Jin Yang's martial arts novels, after practicing the Yi Jin Jing, almost all of them will become top experts with strong internal strength. As a result, Jiang Xiaofeng only found out after joining the martial arts monastic group that they did not have this skill to learn, and its function was not as mysterious as described in the novel. It was mainly used for health preservation or prevention of the three highs. As for the lightness skill of floating on water, Jiang Xiaofeng had always wanted to learn it. Later, when he saw that floating on water was a water running on a plywood, he dispelled this idea. At this moment, the sunlight had already poured in and filled the entire room. Jiang Xiaofeng felt that it was getting late and it was time to verify whether the dream was true or not. He put on his monk robe, put on his shoes, and walked out the door. After arriving at the set and greeting the brothers, Jiang Xiaofeng saw Huang Baoqiang in a corner, feeling depressed. He immediately walked up and asked curiously, Baoqiang, why don't you come over? Huang Baoqiang lowered his head and said tearlessly, they said I'm a child and won't let me audition. Originally, due to his young age and short stature, Huang Baoqiang did not even have the opportunity to audition, so he was directly rejected. Jiang Xiaofeng patted his shoulder and comforted him, saying, Baoqiang, don't be discouraged. You are still young now, and in a few years, you will grow up and have plenty of opportunities. After listening to Jiang Xiaofeng's words, Huang Baoqiang regained hope and secretly swore in his heart to grow taller and grow up quickly. In this way, when the production team picks actors again in the future, he can be seen. Unlike Huang Baoqiang, Jiang Xiaofeng was selected by the deputy director as soon as he went to the set. The deputy director felt that he had a good appearance and a straight physique, so he let him play the role of a popular actor without lines, just like other selected brothers, in the play, Sentimental Shaolin Temple. After joining the crew of Sentimental Shaolin Temple, 
Jiang Xiaofeng quickly discovered that the main cast of this drama coincided with his dream memories. Sentiment at Shaolin Temple is indeed a co-production film produced by Taiwanese director Li Chaoyong, starring mainland actor Wang Buizhao and Xiangjiang actress Chen Farong from both sides of the Taiwan Strait. After this incident, Jiang Xiaofeng also began to believe that the rebirth memory in his dream was true and reliable, otherwise he could not have predicted it. As for the job of a mass actor, Jiang Xiaofeng himself is not very interested. He is willing to participate in Dingqing Shaolin Temple purely for a daily salary of 5 yuan. Jiang Xiaofeng is not open-minded about money, mainly because he is ready to leave Shaolin Temple and venture down the mountain to explore the world. Therefore, Jiang Xiaofeng wants to save more before going down the mountain, so that his life after going down can be guaranteed. Chapter 2 Little Junior Brother Who Dreams of Being a Star you are listening at NovelFull.audio. As the new year approaches, Jiang Xiaofeng plans to spend this year's Lunar New Year at Shaolin Temple before going down the mountain to explore the world. Jiang Xiaofeng did not leave immediately, but also wanted to seize the time and save more money at Shaolin Temple, because there was basically no need to spend money at Shaolin Temple, and he could save almost as much as he earned. Over the past few years, Jiang Xiaofeng has performed martial arts and helped his master run errands to guide his junior brothers. He has saved a total of 623 yuan, ranging from zero to whole, with a maximum denomination of 10 yuan, followed by 5.21 yuan, and a small amount ranging from 51.2 cents. The huge sum of 623 yuan was piled up together, filling a small cardboard box. Jiang Xiaofeng felt it inconvenient to carry so much cash down the mountain and was easy to be missed by thieves. So he exchanged a few cents for whole 5 or 10 yuan bills with his senior brothers. As for the female protagonist Chen Farong in Love at Shaolin Temple, many martial brothers think she is white and beautiful, and she has been discussed in private. However, Jiang Xiaofeng thinks that she is just average beautiful and not considered top dot notch, especially on set. After seeing her short hair style, it becomes even more dull and tasteless. In Jiang Xiaofeng's mind, beautiful women should be like Zhou Huimin, with long hair, purity, beauty, and gentleness. He completely cannot appreciate women with short hair and feels that they lack femininity. In the following days, Jiang Xiaofeng either played tricks on the crew of Emotional Shaolin Temple or performed programs for tourists in the temple. Occasionally, he would also work with his senior brother Su Pingjun to guide and supervise the training of his master Shi Yanhong. Huang Baoqiang, who has only been at Shaolin Temple for a year, is not yet qualified to learn moves. His daily training content is running, mountain climbing. Mountain climbing, running generally speaking, the morning is for training, the afternoon is for cultural classes, and in the evening, one also needs to review the training content for the day. During the first three years of Jiang Xiaofeng's arrival at Shaolin Temple, he also endured this boring and difficult life. Because Jiang Xiaofeng is good at speaking and proficient in drunken fist and drunken sword, Huang Baoqiang particularly admires him. He also likes to pester Jiang Xiaofeng and wants his second senior brother to open the back door for him and teach him some tricks and weapons. When Jiang Xiaofeng is in a good mood, he occasionally teaches him one or two moves, but most of the time, he advises him, Bao Qiang, you should practice your basic skills first, and it's not too late to learn the routines later. Huang Bao Qiang said, I want to become a celebrity in the future. Learning more things will be useful for me to make movies. Although most of the disciples who come to Shaolin Temple have dreams of becoming Kung Fu stars in their hearts, there is still no second one like Huang Bao Qiang who speaks directly. Quickly, Almost all the senior brothers knew that there was a Huang Baoqiang in the temple who dreamed of becoming a star all day long. That evening, after finishing his cultural class, Huang Baoqiang came to find Jiang Xiaofeng as usual. After staying in Jiang Xiaofeng's room for a while, Huang Baoqiang couldn't help but ask, Second senior brother, it's almost Chinese New Year, why haven't Jet Li returned to our Shaolin temple? Jiang Xiaofeng laughed and replied, Baoqiang, you misunderstood. Jet Li is not from Shaolin Temple. 
His martial arts were learned at a sports school called Shikahai, and he was able to perform in Shaolin Temple, mainly because of his handsome appearance. He has won the National Martial Arts Championship for five consecutive years, and has nothing to do with our Shaolin Temple. After listening to Jiang Xiaofeng's explanation, Wang Baocheng finally realized that Jet Li, who played the role of the monk Zhu Yuan in the movie Shaolin Temple, was not a monk from Shaolin Temple, and his martial arts were not learned at Shaolin Temple. At this moment, Huang Baoqiang felt like a bolt from the blue, his worldview was about to collapse, but he still didn't give up and asked, So. Where's that bad guy Wang Renzi? Jiang Xiaofeng replied, He's not from our Shaolin Temple either. He's a professor at Shandong University of Physical Education. Huang Baoqiang, with a bewildered expression on his face, continued to ask, what about Master Tanzong? Jiang Xiaofeng replied, Are you talking about Teacher Yu Hai? He was also from a sports school and studied praying mantis fist from a famous teacher. He has nothing to do with our Shaolin Temple. Upon learning the truth from Jiang Xiaofeng's mouth, Huang Baoqiang was almost disappointed and crying. His whole face was like a frosted eggplant. Soft and not drooping. You should know that Huang Baoqiang came to Shaolin Temple to learn martial arts after watching Li Lianjie's play, Shaolin Temple. He thought that after learning martial arts, he could also make movies like Li Lianjie and become a Kung Fu star. As a result, Jiang Xiaofeng mercilessly told him that Jet Li's martial arts had nothing to do with Shaolin Temple. Jiang Xiaofeng also truthfully told Huang Baoqiang that at that time, there were indeed many senior uncles, uncles, and brothers in the temple who participated in the filming of the movie Shaolin Temple as stunt doubles and mass actors. After learning the truth, Huang Baoqiang's sadness and disappointment were no less than the heartbreak and indignation that Emperor Chongzhen heard in the Qianqing Palace of the Taiha Palace when Tang Tong handed over Jiyong Pass to Li Zicheng, or the sadness and sorrow that Emperor Chongzhen heard in the Zhanghe Palace when his uncle, Prince Fu, was beheaded by Li Zicheng in Luoyang. A few days later, news of Chen Xiaolong signing a contract with Baodao Changhong Film and Television Company in preparing to shoot a movie spread back to Shaolin Temple, reigniting hope for Huang Baoqiang. Chen Xiaolong studied under the abbot of Shaolin Temple, Shi Yongxin, at the age of two and became a disciple of a Shaolin layman, with the Dharma name Shi Xiaolong. He belonged to the Yenzi generation of laymen. It is worth a question that the seniority of Shaolin Temple is inherited in the following order. Fu, Hui, Jizi, and Zhu can comprehend the essence. Zhou Hongpu Guangzong, Daoqing Tongxian Zhu. Quiet and pure like the sea, pure and pure. Virtue lasts forever, and a beautiful body is always strong. The heart shines brightly and deeply, and the nature is clear and revered. Zhongzheng, Shangxi, and Zen, respectfully bestow upon you on Jidu. Xueting as the mentor, guiding you back to Xian Road because Jiang Xiaofeng and Huang Baoqiang are fellow disciples, both of whom are Shi Yan Hong from the Yan generation, they belong to the Heng generation. Jiang Xiaofeng's Dharma name is Heng Yuan, and Huang Baoqiang's Dharma name is Hengji. In terms of age, Jiang Xiaofeng is 12 or 13 years older than Shi Xiaolong, and Huang Baoqiang is also 5 years older than Shi Xiaolong. However, according to the seniority of Shaolin Temple, when they see Shi Xiaolong, who is only 5 years old, they should also respectfully call him Shi Shu. Worshipping a teacher is a discipline, and it's better to do it early than to do it well. There was a young man named Zhang Shuwuhu, despite watching the movie Shaolin Temple and disregarding the opposition of his family, came to Shaolin Temple in Songs Han alone. At first, Shaolin Temple did not accept it, and he did not go home. He stayed at the martial arts school at the foot of the mountain for half a year. Later, through the relationship between his classmates and brother who were also at Shaolin Temple, Zhang Shuwu was reluctantly accepted and became the 32nd generation disciple of Shaolin Temple. At the age of 12, he converted to Shaolin and became the head of Shaolin Temple's martial arts team, Zen Master De Yang, practicing martial arts and meditation. It was only a year later that he became known as the Xingyu Dharma name. In this way, Shi Xingyu, who was two years later than Jiang Xiaofeng and one year younger than him, 
became his master three generations older than Jiang Xiaofeng because he had become a higher ranking master. Jiang Xiaofeng was very dissatisfied at the time, and in addition, Chu Xingyu relied on his high seniority in Shaolin Temple and being a disciple of Zen Master Diyang. He often added a stopper to the cafeteria when queuing for meals, and several times he inserted himself in front of Jiang Xiaofeng. Jiang Xiaofeng felt very unhappy and had several arguments with Shi Xingyu. They looked at each other and didn't like each other, so they privately arranged for Shi Xingyu to have a one dot on point one match. Although Shaolin Temple prohibits disciples from fighting and harming each other, Shi Xingyu is also a belligerent and extremely confident in his martial arts skills. Without saying a word, he agreed. So, after finishing their meal, the two of them put down their bowls and went up the mountain to fight. Jiang Xiaofeng is not a vegetarian either. With his strong physique and a little effort, he made Shi Xingyu, who had just grown hair, cry. Yu Yu reading www.yuyukangshu.net at first, Shi Xingyu was still unconvinced, wiping away his tears and wanting to fight again. Jiang Xiaofeng didn't argue with him, but relied on his strong strength to ride onto him in the fierce fight, grabbed his neck, and choked him until he was almost suffocating before making him surrender. Seeing Shi Xingyu pleading for mercy, Jiang Xiaofeng didn't continue to exert any force. He just grabbed his neck and asked, Do you dare to join our team in the future? Do you dare to? You let go, you let go first. Although Shi Xingyu had already conceded, he still refused to bow his head about cutting the queue. Without saying a word, Jiang Xiaofeng grabbed his egg and threatened, How dare I ask you again for the last time? As the old saying goes, there are three ways to be unfilial, and having no offspring is a big deal. Shi Xingyu was afraid that Jiang Xiaofeng would come, so he let out a hiss and trembled. He quickly changed his mind and said, I dare not, I dare not, don't mess around, let go quickly. Jiang Xiaofeng was originally trying to scare him and didn't dare to really eradicate him. He was also worried that he would report, so he let him go and warned, don't tell the abbot. Shi Xingyu was afraid of being punished, so he replied, who said who is a dog. In order to avoid punishment from the abbot, both Jiang Xiaofeng and Shi Xingyu tacitly kept their promises and did not report to their respective masters or abbots. However, Shi Xingyu was also a tough old man. After recovering from his scars, he forgot about the pain. A few days later, he sought revenge against Jiang Xiaofeng, who was also a tough person and didn't speak much. His actions were even heavier than last time. After being beaten several times in a row, Shi Xingyu also became honest, and Jiang Xiaofeng became a shadow in his heart, a mountain that could not be crossed. There are only three people in the entire Shaolin Temple of Songshan who can convince Shi Xingyu, and Jiang Xiaofeng is one of them. Chapter 3 The Spring Festival Gala and the Legend of the White Snake You are listening at NovelFull.audio January 21st, New Year's Eve Jiang Xiaofeng, along with all the martial arts practitioners, masters, and brothers, had the most sumptuous dinner of the year in the cafeteria. Unlike the vegetarian monks in the temple, lay disciples like Jiang Xiaofeng, who specialize in martial arts, have at least eggs for every meal, and occasionally even meat dishes such as pig trotters and pork belly. There's no other way, if monks don't eat meat, they won't be able to withstand high-dot-intensity training. At this New Year's Eve dinner, there were not only mutton, but also chicken, ribs, black fungus, rolls of dried bean milk creams and so on. Everyone was also given a bottle of Gian Libo in cans, which made the big guy happy. The martial arts practitioners are all physical laborers who train tirelessly every day. As soon as each dish is served, it will be completely eliminated in less than two minutes. After having Chinese New Year's Eve dinner, Jiang Xiaofeng and the big guy gathered in front of a 12-inch black and white sharp TV in the cafeteria to watch the 1993 CCTV Spring Festival Gala. In terms of form, this year's Spring Festival Gala stage adopted a three-dot dimensional stage structure. The stage is located in the center of the audience. Before the actors come on stage, they all sit in the audience, 
when it's time to go on stage, walk directly onto the stage, and after the performance is over, walk off the stage again. This kind of stage allows actors and audiences to no longer have an on-stage and off-stage relationship, and the audience also has a sense of participation. In terms of content, in addition to the three mainland hosts Zhao Zhongxiang, N.I. Ping, and Yang Lan, the Spring Festival Gala also invited Liang Yenling, Li Qingyan, and Zhang Yongquan from Xiangjiang, Taiwan Province, and Singapore, and through them, achieved the exchange of TV programs from Xiangjiang, Taiwan Province, and Singapore with CCTV programs. They also interviewed heavyweight figures in the entertainment industry such as Zhang Xiaoyan, Zhang Min, and Huang Gui. The peaceful atmosphere of Chinese people all over the world celebrating the Chinese New Year is fully enhanced. For the big guys, the most anticipated programs are not magnificent songs and dances, nor acrobatics, but skits and songs. To be fair, Zhao Benson's collaboration with Yen Shuping, Wang Zhongqing, and Su Jia in the skit, Boss's Lady, is one of his previous programs that has had a relatively low level of deviation, and the response received is quite average. On the contrary, the cross.talk auction, brought by Nyo Kun and Feng Gong attracted more laughter and applause. In the show, auction, Nyo Kun and Feng Gong joked about famous figures such as Zhao Benshan, Gong Li, and Schlappner, but they didn't forget to self-criticize. Zhao Benson's hat, Gong Li's donkey ridden in red sorghum, and Schlappner's white hair were all sold at high prices, except for Feng Gong's name, which was getting lower and lower, and finally sold for two cents. Guo Fuchen, one of the four heavenly kings of Xiangjiang, wore a mushroom-like four- or six-part hairstyle and brought a song and dance called Give All Love to You, singing out the love declaration of the younger generation. Taiwanese singer Wang Jia, as a wanderer, brought some vicissitudes and sadness to the stage of the Spring Festival Gala with his song, Going Home. He shared his feeling of returning home and moved countless viewers. Not long after, a melody of, The Sound of Waves Still, sounded, and the song drifted into the ears of thousands of people. The moon sets and the crows cry. It's always the wind and frost of a thousand years. The sound of the waves is still the same, and we can't see the night before. How can we repeat the story of yesterday? This old ship ticket, can we board your passenger ship? This is a popular song adapted from the famous poem Night Mooring at Maple Bridge by the Tang Dynasty poet Zhang Ji. The singer was Mao Ning, who had just won the most popular male singer award in Guangfu province. On stage, Mao Ning, dressed in a suit, tie, and a long white scarf, was young and handsome with a graceful demeanor. Coupled with his affectionate and not sorrowful singing voice, he became the prince of love songs in the hearts of countless audiences and a well-known superstar. After watching CCTV's Spring Festival Gala, Jiang Xiaofeng's mood remained very excited and excited, unable to calm down for a long time. The content of tonight's Spring Festival Gala program once again confirms to Jiang Xiaofeng that his dreams about his past life are true. Because before he even watched this year's Spring Festival Gala, he had a deep impression of most of the program content. The next day, the first day of the Lunar New Year. Early morning. Dang, dang, dang. When the bell in the Vesaki Yamani Hall rang, Jiang Xiaofeng woke up from his sleep, put on his monk's robes, and ran to the Mahavira Hall with Huang Baoqiang and his brothers. The resounding and stirring bell rang throughout the entire temple, giving Jiang Xiaofeng a sense of enlightenment. The Vesaki Yamani Hall is a place for Buddhist activities in the temple. It is surrounded by lush ancient trees and quite quiet. It is particularly solemn and dignified under the contrast between the stairs and the hall buildings. Because it was the Lunar New Year, many local people came to the temple to pray. There was an incense burner poured with bronze in front of the Mahavira Hall, where they burned incense and prayed. The monks in the temple sit on the ground and meditate, reciting scriptures and chanting Buddha. Jiang Xiaofeng was also muttering words in his mouth, appearing to be a devout monk on the surface, but his thoughts had already wandered into space and drifted to the sky. In Jiang Xiaofeng's view, 
this is likely to be his last time celebrating the new year at Shaolin Temple in his life, because soon he will leave here and embark on a brand new journey. On the evening of February 1st, the third program of CCTV aired for the first time a mythological drama called The Legend of the New White Snake, starring Zhao Yaji, Yi Tong, Chen Meiqi, and others. Once this drama was broadcasted, it caused a great sensation in mainland China, and it was simply a complete mess. Whether in urban or rural areas, almost every household and every TV set was playing the play Legend of the New White Snake. In fact, as early as November last year, this ancient costume mythological TV drama, which integrates elements of music, dance, and opera, premiered in Taiwan province, with a high ratings of 30% at that time. After CCTV aired this drama, its viewership reached 43%, which is definitely a classic TV drama at the phenomenal level. And the disciples of Shaolin Temple also watched the drama Legend of the New White Snake on time every night in front of the TV. After the broadcast of New White Lady's Adventures, many senior brothers had a dream lover in their hearts, who was the White Lady played by Zhao Yaji. Of course, there are also many senior brothers who like Xiao Qing, Bai Lian, Su Xian, and Guanim. However, overall, most people still prefer by Nyangzi and her actress Zhao Yaji. After watching The Legend of the White Lady, Huang Baoqiang couldn't resist the excitement in his heart and asked Jiang Xiaofeng, second senior brother, which female celebrity do you think looks best? Jiang Xiaofeng couldn't say which female celebrity looked the best, but what he really wants to see now is Zhou Huimen. If it were in the past, Jiang Xiaofeng would name Zhou Huimen without hesitation, but since he had that dream, his views on many things have become different. He believes that human aesthetics are not fixed. Perhaps he likes Zhou Huimen now, but after a while, he may like another female celebrity. Thinking of this, Jiang Xiaofeng smiled and asked in response, People are small and ghosts are big. Why are you asking this? Huang Baoqiang scratched his head, revealing a mouthful of white teeth, and asked with a smile, Second senior brother, do you think Xiao Yaji, who plays the role of white lady, looks good? Jiang Xiaofeng couldn't help but say, of course it looks good. Is there any need to ask? Upon hearing Jiang Xiaofeng's words, Huang Baoqiang felt as if he had found a confidant. He smiled and said, Second senior brother, I also like Xiao Yaji. I don't think she's like a snake spirit at all, more like a gentle and kind fairy. I don't like Su Xian, I don't think she has any masculine appearance. Jiang Xiaofeng said angrily and humorously, the actor who played Su Xian was originally a woman, how could she have the appearance of a man? Huang Baoqiang felt that Jiang Xiaofeng was teasing him and asked incredulously, second senior brother, are you lying to me? How could Su Xian be a woman? Isn't he a man? Jiang Xiaofeng said calmly, Bao Qiang, let me tell you this. The character of Su Xian is indeed male, but the actor who plays Su Xian is female. She dresses up as a man. Do you understand? Huang Bao Qiang first shook his head and then nodded. Seeing Huang Bao Qiang half believing and half doubting, Jiang Xiaofeng was too lazy to explain to Huang Bao Qiang again whether he believed it or not. Soon, Huang Baoqiang stopped worrying about whether Su Xian was a man or a woman and said with great anticipation, Second senior brother, if I want to marry a wife in the future, I must marry someone like Xiao Yaji. Jiang Xiaofeng thought of the memories of his past life in his dream, but did not intentionally strike at Huang Baoqiang, the young junior brother. Instead, he reminded him, then you must keep your eyes open. Don't grow up and find a fairy to go home with. Huang Baoqiang confidently said, Second senior brother, you underestimate me too much. Don't be fooled by my honesty and intelligence, but can I still not distinguish who is good to me and who is bad to me? Jiang Xiaofeng sighed helplessly and said, Baoqiang, the heart is divided by the belly. Don't take human nature too simplistic or superficial. Seeing second senior brother's serious expression, Huang Baoqiang didn't dare to talk back and nodded with a hint of understanding. I know second senior brother, I will definitely keep my eyes open and never be deceived by fairies. 
Chapter 4 Descending the Mountain and Heading North You are listening at NovelFull.audio Shaolin Temple has an unwritten rule that allows one to choose to leave or stay as long as three years have passed. Three years and three years later, when Jiang Xiaofeng was twelve years old, he stayed at Shaolin Temple for six years. Now it is his seventh year, and it is time to leave. If Jiang Xiaofeng is willing, he can also stay at Shaolin Temple and perform with his familiar master and brothers for tourists, or even go abroad to perform and participate in competitions, ensuring a secure life. But now it's different from the past. Since Jiang Xiaofeng gained memories of his past life in his dream, he no longer willingly stays in the temple. He wants to go to the colorful world outside to take a look. Jiang Xiaofeng has decided to go to Yanjing to become a singer because he heard that those who engage in literature and art must go to the capital. Therefore, he plans to go down the mountain and develop in Yanjing. After all, it was his master who admitted him to Shaolin Temple, and Jiang Xiaofeng was the first to inform his master Shi Yanhong of his intention to leave. People are not plants and trees, who can be ruthless. Jiang Xiaofeng and Shi Yanhong have been mentors and apprentices for six years. Although Jiang Xiaofeng was whipped by him when he first arrived, the relationship between mentors and apprentices is still very deep. Shi Yanhong was not surprised by Jiang Xiaofeng's choice, as someone would leave every year and he had already become accustomed to it. Upon learning that Jiang Xiaofeng was going to Yanjing, Shi Yanhong not only did not object, but also expressed support, saying, it's good to go to Yanjing and make a name for yourself. But be careful of your safety and don't let anyone deceive you. Jiang Xiaofeng nodded and said, I know master. I will definitely be careful. Shi Yanhong paused for a moment and then said, if you haven't broken through, don't be discouraged. You're welcome back at any time. Jiang Xiaofeng gratefully said, thank you, master. I remember your words. Immediately after, Jiang Xiaofeng spent two more days bidding farewell to the senior uncles and uncles in the temple, and finally notified the senior brothers. The saddest thing to hear about Jiang Xiaofeng's departure was none other than his junior brother Huang Baoqiang. However, when Huang Baoqiang heard that Jiang Xiaofeng was going to Yanjing, his eyes lit up and he curiously asked, Second senior brother, what are you going to Yanjing for? Are you going to be an actor? Jiang Xiaofeng didn't really want to become an actor when he went to Yanjing this time. He just wanted to learn some musical instruments, learn some music theory knowledge of composition and arrangement, and then use his past life memories to write one golden song after another, becoming a creative singer. As for becoming an actor, Jiang Xiaofeng feels that the conditions are not yet mature. When he makes a name for himself in the music industry, he will not worry about not having the opportunity to become an actor. In order to give Huang Baoqiang a thought, Jiang Xiaofeng nodded with a smile and said, Yes, it's just being an actor. Huang Baoqiang couldn't sit still and asked, Where can I become an actor if I go to Yanjing? Jiang Xiaofeng thought for a moment and said, Yanjing Film Studio. Huang Baoqiang heard about the Yanjing Film Studio for the first time and said, Second senior brother, can we shoot movies whenever we go? Jiang Xiaofeng smiled and replied, Almost. As long as you squat at the door, there will be a director looking for you to film. Upon hearing Jiang Xiaofeng's words, Huang Baoqiang's dream of making movies reignited in his heart. Huang Baoqiang asked eagerly, Second senior brother, can you take me to Yanjing? I also want to make a movie. In Jiang Xiaofeng's past life memories, Huang Baoqiang went to Yanjing in 1999, and now there is still six years left until 1999. Jiang Xiaofeng didn't want to disrupt Huang Baoqiang's life trajectory for the time being. He said earnestly, Baoqiang, you are still young and don't know anything. You should learn more skills here. When you grow up and turn 15 or 16, it's not too late for you to go to Yanjing again. When the time comes, you can directly go to Yanjing to find me. If you can't find me in Yanjing, you can squat outside the Yanjing film studio and take care of yourself first. We will definitely see each other again, senior brothers. 
Although Huang Baoqiang was very disappointed and wanted to go to Yanjing with Jiang Xiaofeng, he also knew that he was too young and short now. Even if he went to Yanjing, there was not much drama to play, so he had no choice but to bid farewell to Jiang Xiaofeng. The day Jiang Xiaofeng left Shaolin Temple happened to be March 1, 1993. Early that morning, Jiang Xiaofeng only carried a sack full of clothes and pants and quietly went down the mountain without disturbing anyone. Before descending the mountain, Jiang Xiaofeng turned around to look at Shaolin Temple. Although it didn't look as grand as in the movie Shaolin Temple, it was still the place where he had lived for six years, and his heart was somewhat reluctant and sad. Fortunately, at this moment, the bright red sun rose from the mountain and shone on Jiang Xiaofeng's face, making him feel warm and giving him warmth and strength. Jiang Xiaofeng has already planned to take a car to Zhengzhou first, and then take a train to Yanjing. However, transportation is really backward these days. Even in famous scenic spots like Shaolin Temple, there are bumpy dirt roads at the foot of the mountains. Because there is no direct bus to the city, Jiang Xiaofeng needs to take a bus to Dengfeng first, and then transfer to Zhengzhou. Including the waiting time, it was only a short distance of less than 100 kilometers. It took Jiang Xiaofeng more than three hours to arrive at Zhengzhou railway station smoothly. In early 1993, Zhengzhou had already built many high-dot-rise buildings and had done a very good job in greening. If you ignore the bicycles coming and going on the streets, it looks like a modern big city. However, the most famous landmark buildings in Zhengzhou are still the Erki Pagoda and the Zhengzhou Railway Station, which was built in 1904. Zhengzhou Railway Station is one of the largest transportation hubs in China, providing direct access to all provincial capitals throughout the country. It is known as the Heart of China Railway. Looking at the crowded Zhengzhou Railway Station, Jiang Xiaofeng's alertness suddenly increased, tightly holding onto a burlap bag, afraid that someone might snatch it away. You should know that public security is very poor these days. In such crowded and bustling places, incidents such as robbery, theft, and abduction often occur. After queuing for a while at the ticket window, Jiang Xiaofeng finally bought a train ticket from Zhengzhou to Yanjing. The sleeper ticket from Zhengzhou to Yanjing is 43 yuan, the hard seat ticket and station ticket are both 26 yuan, and the student half fare is 13 yuan. In order to save as much money as possible, Jiang Xiaofeng did not choose a sleeper ticket. Instead, he spent 26 yuan to buy a station ticket and planned to stop all the way from Zhengzhou to Yanjing. This is not difficult for Jiang Xiaofeng. When he was at Shaolin Temple, he often trained to take a horse stance and had a very stable lower body, squatting for three to five hours at a time. However, what made Jiang Xiaofeng feel particularly uncomfortable was that the environment inside the train was too harsh, and the hard seat carriages were crowded with people, even the hallway was full of people. There was also a musty smell in the air, like smelling socks. Some people are eating bananas, some are eating oranges, and some are eating buns. Fortunately, Jiang Xiaofeng has strong adaptability, otherwise, it is easy to be smoked and vomited by these messy flavors. Boom boom, boom boom. As the train slowly started, pleasant music also played on the platform. It was Mao Ning who sang the song, The Sound of Waves Still, on the stage of the Spring Festival Gala. Take away a fishing torch let it warm my eyes leave behind a true love story let it anchor by the maple bridge helpless me. As the train sped away, the singing also drifted away with the wind, and all the farewell scenery solidified into this platform ticket in my hand. The Yellow River Do you see it? It's the Yellow River outside, dot. Upon hearing the big guy's discussions, Jiang Xiaofeng couldn't help but look out. Jiang Xiaofeng saw the Yellow River for the first time in reality, and was very excited in his heart. This mother river of the Chinese nation, which was only seen in textbooks before, is now speeding over the Yellow River. The feeling can be imagined. However, March has just passed the dry season of the Yellow River, and the river surface is not as wide as imagined. In the distance, there is a vast white mist, and the curved river water seems to come from the sky. 
The south bank of the Yellow River is Mangshan, and trains pass by the mountain. At the foot of the mountain, the giant stone statue of Emperor Yen and Emperor Huang, standing 106 meters high on the bank of the Yellow River, looks very eye-dot catching. I don't know how long he stood like this. When he reached Changshan, Jiang Xiaofeng felt like his coat had been pulled off, but he didn't panic because most of his cash was not in his clothes or in his sack. To be on the safe side, Jiang Xiaofeng had already packed the cash in oil paper bags and placed them inside his underwear and shoes. Unless the thief had stripped off his underwear on the spot, it would be difficult to steal his money from him. Jiang Xiaofeng turned around and saw a pure and beautiful girl with a ponytail tied up. The person across from me got off the car, please sit down first, he said Jiang Xiaofeng looked at the girl in front of him who was about the same age as him, with a standard oval face, bright eyes and white teeth, and very delicate and upright facial features, giving people a feeling like a refreshing breeze. After saying, thank you, Jiang Xiaofeng squatted down and picked up the burlap bag lying on the ground. Perhaps due to standing for too long, Jiang Xiaofeng's feet became stiff, numb, and his movements changed accordingly. Jiang Xiaofeng put in a lot of effort before picking up the burlap bag and sitting down opposite the girl. P.S. This book has been signed, so everyone can rest assured to watch it. The new book needs to be taken care of, including collecting, tipping, monthly tickets, recommendation tickets, and the love and support of our friends. Chapter 5 Encounter on the Train, Formally Becoming a Bipieo Member You are listening at NovelFull.audio Jiang Xiaofeng felt that the girl looked a bit familiar, as if she had seen her somewhere before. He couldn't help but take two more glances, and the girl felt a little embarrassed when he saw her, her face turning red. At this moment, someone deliberately coughed, and Jiang Xiaofeng noticed that there was a refined and handsome middle-aged man sitting next to the girl, who looked like her father. The scene suddenly became awkward, and Jiang Xiaofeng quickly averted his gaze and politely greeted the middle-aged man, saying, Hello uncle, are you going to Yanjing? The middle-aged man didn't say much, just let out a perfunctory, hmm, his expression looking a bit serious, giving people a feeling of not being close to strangers. The girl looked at Jiang Xiaofeng's bright bald head and curiously asked, Are you a monk from Shaolin Temple? Jiang Xiaofeng touched his head and denied with a smile, I'm not a monk. I'm a lay disciple of Shaolin Temple who specializes in martial arts. You know martial arts. That's amazing. The girl's eyes were full of admiration. Jiang Xiaofeng smiled and then asked, what about you? Are you a student? The girl nodded and said, Hmm, I'm an athlete. Jiang Xiaofeng had never seen such a beautiful and refined athlete before, and asked with great interest, What sports do you do? The girl proudly said, Artistic gymnastics. Jiang Xiaofeng suddenly realized and said, So it's like this. The girl didn't understand what Jiang Xiaofeng meant by this sentence and asked in confusion, What's wrong? Jiang Xiaofeng smiled and replied, It's nothing, I just feel like you're very different from the female athlete in my impression. The girl then asked, What's different? Why didn't I notice? After pondering for a moment, Jiang Xiaofeng said, Most female athletes look more masculine, like boys. You are different. You look very ladylike, quiet, and beautiful. As soon as the words fell, the girl had not even had time to feel shy when the middle-aged man's cough suddenly rang out again. Jiang Xiaofeng had already used the remaining light of his eyes to catch sight of the girl's father beside him, who was staring at him intently. He dared not repeat himself and quickly looked away. After being praised by Jiang Xiaofeng, the girl was clearly a bit shy. In front of her father, she was also embarrassed to talk to the handsome young man in front of her, so she had to close her eyes and calm down, pretending that nothing had happened. The two of them had nothing to say and arrived in Baoding. Many more passengers had come up, but Jiang Xiaofeng had to take the initiative to leave and return his seat to the other person. In the evening, the train arrived at Yanjing Station, and the passengers were carrying big and small bags, pushing and shoving each other. 
Jiang Xiaofeng squeezed for a while before finally carrying the burlap bags and getting off the train. Yenjing Station is truly the capital train station. As he passed by the waiting room, Jiang Xiaofeng looked around and found people everywhere, luggage everywhere, and no place to rest. Smoking, eating instant noodles, playing poker, chatting with various accents. It was really smoky and chaotic. Standing out of Yenjing, Jiang Xiaofeng walked aimlessly on the street, looking at the two or three times wider road than Zhengzhou and the endless crowds, suddenly feeling extremely small in this big city. After walking for a while, Jiang Xiaofeng felt that it was getting dark, so he stopped first and placed the burlap bag on the ground. Jiang Xiaofeng wrapped himself in a black coat and decided to find a hotel to make do for the night before renting a house tomorrow. After walking for about 20 minutes, it was already dark when Jiang Xiaofeng walked into a hotel that looked well decorated. He opened a room for 10 yuan and paid a 10 yuan deposit. The landlady was a middle-aged woman with a bulky figure and wavy hair permed. After receiving Jiang Xiaofeng's deposit, she went to the next room and brought Jiang Xiaofeng a bedding. Immediately after, the landlady took another bunch of keys and led Jiang Xiaofeng up the second floor. You stay in this room. Check out at 1 p.m. tomorrow. As she spoke, the landlady stopped at the corner of the second floor and opened a room for Jiang Xiaofeng with the key. Jiang Xiaofeng only discovered when he entered the room that the paint on the surrounding walls had peeled off due to dampness, the faucet in the bathroom had rusted, and there were still a few hairs on the toilet seat. The environment almost doesn't matter. Anyway, I only stayed for one night, and the room fee wasn't too expensive. The only thing Jiang Xiaofeng couldn't accept was the musty smell of the room and blankets. However, with a temporary foothold, Jiang Xiaofeng can finally put down his luggage and go out to find food with peace of mind. Jiang Xiaofeng, who had just arrived, didn't dare to spend money recklessly. He casually ate a fast food at a fast food restaurant, bought some necessary daily necessities on the way, and rushed back to the hotel. After settling down his luggage, Jiang Xiaofeng took the cash from his underwear and shoe soles out of the plastic bag and divided it into several parts, hiding them in several corners of the room. Immediately after, Jiang Xiaofeng took some change and went to the bathhouse near the hotel to take a bath. The bathhouses in Yenjing are quite authentic and authentic, unlike those newly opened sauna centers that have been corroded and infiltrated by the evil capitalism. In addition to traditional projects such as back rubbing, foot trimming, and massage, the sauna center has also added modern projects such as massage, deep X, XXXX, triple X, and thermal shock. After Jiang Xiaofeng paid one yuan and handed over the plaque, the staff standing at the entrance shouted casually, take a shower. Their voice was crisp and loud, and everyone in the room could hear them. At this moment, the assistant in charge also shouted in response, Here you are. Please come inside. The ending sound is long and round, which is called a tunnel. The Yenjing bathhouse is divided into two schools. The southern school and the northern school. The southern school mainly focuses on Yangzhou, with delicate massage techniques that emphasize light hands and even strength, and massage the head after taking a bath. The northern style of bathing emphasizes a steady and even grip on the hands, with all the effort focused on the strength of the hands. After rubbing, the body should not be bruised or purple, but should be completely red, which is clearly different from the southern style. Jiang Xiaofeng himself is a practitioner of martial arts, and his physical resistance attribute has already reached its level. It doesn't matter how the southern and northern sects feel, just let the northern sects master give him a bath. As they were about to leave, the assistant in charge of Jiang Xiaofeng's booth service would tidy up the booth while shouting loudly, see off guests. Just like when he came in, every time Jiang Xiaofeng passed by a colleague, someone would shout in response, take your time. Until the entrance of the bathtub, the staff standing in the hall opened the door for Jiang Xiaofeng and said, welcome back. The sound of shouting in the hall was full of the warmth and friendliness unique to old Yanjing. After a night at the hotel, Jiang Xiaofeng ran out of the hotel early the next morning, 
ate a bowl of wonton noodles, and then walked around the streets to find a house. Jiang Xiaofeng's luck was quite good. It only took him two days to rent a house in a large courtyard in the alley of Xiching district. The so dot called large courtyard refers to a courtyard where more than ten households live, which is very different from a quadrangle. A house is definitely not a good one. Over the years, the walls are pitch black, and the walls feel like they will fall off at any moment. There is only a wooden bed inside, and there is nothing else to ask for, not even a table or a chair. Yu Yu reading www.yuyukangshu.net Jiang Xiaofeng didn't mind either, because with a monthly rent of 30 yuan, having a decent room in the XC area of the Second Ring Road in the capital is already a very fortunate thing. Except for the landlord's family, all the tenants living in this courtyard are northerners from all walks of life. The neighbors heard that a Shaolin temple monk had arrived in the yard, which was quite novel and enthusiastic. They not only sent many old newspapers to Jiang Xiaofeng, but also lent him paste and brushes. Jiang Xiaofeng spent another day polishing the glass and cleaning the floors and walls in order to live comfortably here. After four or five days of traveling expenses, including the car fare, rent, and newly purchased wash basin, night pot, and water heater, Jiang Xiaofeng has already spent a total of 173 yuan, leaving only 453 yuan in savings. According to Jiang Xiaofeng's plan, he decided to limit his meal expenses to no more than 5 yuan per day, and take a bath every three days for 1 yuan. If he doesn't suffer from serious illness or major car accidents, he should still be able to barely live a good life in Yanjing for two months. Therefore, Jiang Xiaofeng must find a way to make a living within the next two months, which will enable him to continue living in Yanjing. Working is impossible, and with memories from his past life, Jiang Xiaofeng no longer plans to go out and perform. He knows very well that the money in the Chinese entertainment industry is the best one to earn. So, Jiang Xiaofeng decided to abandon martial arts and become a free-spirited literary and artistic worker. P.S. Thank you to the four friends who gave me tips, encouragement, and support. Ice sugar soaked plum blossom, I am the bottom but I do not hate wealth or provocation, Anderson 15 fairy tales, and laugh for whom. I also want to thank every friend who voted, recommended, or left a message for me. Thank you all, and I wish everyone a happy weekend. Chapter 6 Audition, First Meet John 1 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Confucius said, if a worker wants to do a good job, he must first sharpen his tools. Sun Wukong, who had learned 70.2 changes, only went to the East Sea Dragon Palace to snatch the Rui Golden Hoop stick in order to have a weapon that was worthy of his hand, let alone Jiang Xiaofeng, who was just starting out. Since Jiang Xiaofeng has already planned to transform into a singer-songwriter, it is natural that he cannot afford a decent musical instrument. With his current economic strength, he cannot afford a piano. The only practical and easy-to-learn instrument that he can afford is probably the guitar. Soon, Jiang Xiaofeng learned from his neighbors that the Star C Piano Company in Dong'anmen was a well-known state-owned old store both domestically and internationally, and he wanted to buy an entry-level guitar to come back and learn. The next day, in the morning, sleepy-eyed Jiang Xiaofeng, as usual, woke up to practice morning exercises, and then went to the public restroom with other newly awakened neighbors to pour out the night pot. After washing, Jiang Xiaofeng went to the nearby breakfast shop and ordered two deep dot fried dough sticks, two meat buns and a soybean milk. Having eaten and drunk enough, Jiang Xiaofeng walked on the road, preparing to take the bus to the station. When passing by a newsstand, Jiang Xiaofeng saw an advertisement in a newspaper for the cast of Sunny Days. In order to find suitable actors, director Jiang Wen posted advertisements in the Yanjing Evening News and Xinmin Evening News. Looking for people nationwide, in addition to two actors who looked like him, he also needed several young and distinctive male and female actors. In Jiang Xiaofeng's past life memories, Jiang Wen was a very impressive director, and Sunny Days was also a very impressive movie. 
However, Jiang Xiaofeng knows that he doesn't look like Jiang Wan, but he happens to be 18 years old this year, definitely young and has personality. He should be qualified to interview for other roles. Soon, Jiang Xiaofeng arrived at the audition location for Sunny Days, according to the address in the newspaper. The audition was held in a courtyard in Prince Gong's mansion. As there were not many actors who came for the audition earlier, Jiang Xiaofeng didn't prepare anything. When he saw an actor coming out, he pushed the door in. Jiang Wen was also taken aback when he saw Jiang Xiaofeng enter the house, thinking to himself, how could he come in with a bald head? And Jiang Xiaofeng, for the first time in reality, couldn't help but take a second look at Jiang Wen himself. In Jiang Xiaofeng's opinion, Jiang Wen looks a bit like a UN Mo person, with a pair of eye-dot catching ears and small eyes. His entire face exudes a rough and rugged temperament, complemented by his tall and strong physique, making him appear very imposing. Next to Jiang Wen is the production director of Sunny Days, Air Yong. Air Yong's father is a famous actor from the Bai Film Studio, Zhang Yongshou, and also the handsome battalion commander in the movie Southern Expedition and Northern Warfare. Jiang Wen saw that Jiang Xiaofeng was empty-handed and didn't seem to have made any preparations, but he also guessed that he was the actor who came to audition. He immediately spoke up and said, Everyone has come, let's introduce ourselves. Upon hearing Jiang Wen's words, Jiang Xiaofeng nodded and politely said, Hello director, hello producer. My name is Jiang Xiaofeng and I am 18 years old. I am here to audition for a role. Jiang Wen nodded and looked at Jiang Xiaofeng's bald head, then joked with a smile, Hey buddy, where's your hair? Why did you lose hair so young? Jiang Xiaofeng touched his head and replied, Director, this is not hair loss, I have shaved it. I used to be a Shaolin temple monk. Jiang Wen smashed his mouth and then asked, Can your hair still grow out? Jiang Xiaofeng said decisively, Of course I can. Jiang Wen suddenly became curious about Jiang Xiaofeng's identity and asked, Are you really a monk from Shaolin Temple? Jiang Xiaofeng explained with a mix of tears and laughter, Director, you misunderstood. I am not a monk, I am a martial monk and a lay disciple of Shaolin Temple. Jiang Wen said with great interest, Shaolin's lay disciples are still martial monks, so let's show them to us. Okay. Jiang Xiaofeng didn't hesitate either. He briefly warmed up and then performed his most skilled drunken punches in front of Jiang Wen and the production director Er Yong. Although Jiang Xiaofeng practiced routines at Shaolin Temple, as soon as an expert made a move, he knew if there were any. Jiang Xiaofeng did indeed play well. Jiang Wen and Er Yong saw that Jiang Xiaofeng had two brushes. However, what sparked Jiang Wen's interest in Jiang Xiaofeng was not his drunken fist, nor his status as a monk. What really piqued Jiang Wen's interest in him was his appearance, physique, and masculine temperament, somewhat reminiscent of a mischievous master he had known in his childhood. Perhaps due to practicing martial arts since childhood, Jiang Xiaofeng looks very masculine and has excellent energy and spirit. Jiang Wen turned his head and asked Er Yong beside him, Do you think it looks like it? Er Yong nodded knowingly and said, It's a bit like that. Jiang Xiaofeng didn't understand who he really looked like, but he could be 25% certain that he didn't look like Jiang Wen. He felt much more handsome than Jiang Wen. After pondering for a moment, Jiang Wen said, All right, monk. Please leave your name and your home phone number. If there is any situation, we will notify you as soon as possible. Jiang Xiaofeng casually patted the dust on his clothes and replied, Director, I don't have a phone at home. Jiang Wen said, then you can write down your home address. Okay. After speaking, Jiang Xiaofeng wrote down his name and current address for Jiang Wen on a piece of paper. However, Jiang Xiaofeng does not believe that he has a role to play. He came here purely to try his luck. It would be best if he could be selected, but it would be acceptable if he could not be selected, after all, he is not an actor from a professional background. After leaving the crew of Sunny Days, Jiang Xiaofeng spent 50 cents getting on a bus and went to Xinghai Piano Company to buy a classical guitar. 
When asked about the price of 138 yuan, Jiang Xiaofeng left unhappily and went to a small piano company. He spent 30 yuan to buy a second dot hand red cotton guitar. In order to save some tuition fees, Jiang Xiaofeng spent 1 yuan on two books, Modern Rock Guitar Textbook and Composition Method, at an old book stall on the roadside. At first, Jiang Xiaofeng didn't know notation and didn't know anything. He started by self-studying notation and then learned composition techniques. The book Modern Rock Guitar Textbook includes not only staff but also six line scores, all of which are heavy metal guitar scores. Jiang Xiaofeng was holding a red cotton guitar, completely clueless, so he decided not to read the textbook and would just wander around in a rented room, playing and feeling for himself. The neighbor living next door to Jiang Xiaofeng is a college graduate. Although everyone doesn't want to know his name, in order to facilitate communication and exchange between neighbors, and because he shaved a flat head, everyone called him Flat Head. And because Jiang Xiaofeng came from Shaolin Temple and was bald, he looked like a monk, so everyone called him Monk. Jiang Xiaofeng was fortunate that he was only referred to as a monk and not as bald as a bald man. Ping Tu came to Yenjing to prepare for the postgraduate entrance examination. He hardly goes out of his house every day, reading and studying in his room. But since Jiang Xiaofeng bought a guitar and returned, Ping Tu has been annoyed and agitated by the noise made by Jiang Xiaofeng all day long. A day or two is fine. After a few days, Ping Tu wanted to go crazy several times, but seeing Jiang Xiaofeng's tall and robust figure, he still swallowed his anger and suggested in a low voice, Monk, do me a favor. Can you try to go out and play the guitar during the day? You do this every day, I really can't study, really, please. Jiang Xiaofeng was still very reasonable. After knowing that he was playing the guitar and making a noise while studying, he agreed without saying a word. In the following days, Jiang Xiaofeng reduced his time playing guitar indoors, and most of the time, he went to practice outside the courtyard. The landlord of this large courtyard is a couple. His son is in his third year of high school and Ping Tu has always had a wish, which is to tutor his son's homework and earn some living expenses and rent for himself. But as the college entrance examination was about to take place, Ping Tu's wish to tutor the landlord's son's courses had not been realized. Because the landlord's son positioned himself as a landlord in the future, just like his parents. The landlord's son's name is Xiao Li. After understanding Ping Tu's thoughts, Xiao Li sneered at him and said, In the future, I will rely on this yard and rent the house to people like you. I have nothing to attend, what kind of university? I'm already full. Perhaps due to their similar age, Yu Yu reading www.yuyukangshu.net has a strong affinity for Xiao Li and Jiang Xiaofeng. They not only clamor to learn martial arts from Jiang Xiaofeng, but also ask his parents for money to buy a guitar and come back to Jiang Xiaofeng's house to practice piano skills. Although Xiao Li's academic performance is not very good, he is also a music enthusiast. He often brings his home recorder to Jiang Xiaofeng's house to enjoy and talk about music together. Like most boys in Beijing, Xiao Li also likes rock and roll. He used to think he liked the Black Panther band. It was not until Dou Wei left the Black Panther that Xiao Li realized that he didn't like the Black Panther, but the Black Panther with Dou Wei. He particularly liked the classic songs Dou Wei wrote and sang, Unconsciousness and Don't Break My Heart. In fact, the replacement of musicians and lead vocals in a band is not new in the world, but most of them cannot avoid the five main reasons. Inability to produce songs, incompatible ideas, excessive dependence on someone, uneven income distribution, and insufficient time. Although it is common for bands to change their names and roles without changing their names, it is still fresh for bands like Black Panther, the big brother of Chinese rock music, to change their lead vocals in the world. In their seventh year of formation, the Black Panther band recruited a new lead singer Qin Yong. This is already the fourth lead singer of the band, but the musicians are still from the original team. According to public information, the band's previous fixed lead singers are Ding Wu, 
1987.1988, Do Wei, 1988.1991, Wan Shu, 1992.1993, Qin Yong, 1993. Following this trend, perhaps one day in the future, Black Panther Band and lead singer will become the most talked about meme in the world of Chinese rock. Chapter 7 Yenjing's bid for the Olympics, create the first song. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. March 20, 1993 On Saturday, citizens of Yenjing overtook on the Fourth Ring Road, creating momentum for Yenjing's first bid for the Olympics. Most of the neighbors, including Ping Tu, deliberately went from the Second Ring Road to the Fourth Ring Road to watch the excitement, leaving only Jiang Xiaofeng and Xiao Li in the courtyard. Jiang Xiaofeng didn't join the fun, it's not that he was unpatriotic or lacked a sense of collective honor. However, in his memory, it's highly likely that Yenjing's bid for the Olympics will go wrong. Practicing guitar indoors was a bit boring and boring, so Jiang Xiaofeng wanted to invite Xiao Li to visit the scenic spots in Yenjing. Although Xiao Li is an authentic Yenjing native, he has never been to many scenic spots in Yenjing. For example, the famous Great Wall, which is so big, has only been visited once. There is also the Forbidden City. Xiao Li has only been there once since he was young, and it was because of the school's organization that he went there. As a stranger, Jiang Xiaofeng is quite interested in Yenjing. He didn't go before because he didn't have a companion, so going alone is boring. Now with Xiao Li as a companion, the ticket price is not expensive. For any famous scenic spot, the maximum ticket price is only 1 or 2 yuan. Jiang Xiaofeng can also afford it, so he took Xiao Li to visit the famous scenic spots in Yenjing together. In other words, from the early days of liberation to the early 1990s, the ticket prices of tourist attractions have always been implemented with a low ticket price policy, with tickets priced at 5 cents and 1 jiao. Until 1990, after joint research with the Municipal Price Bureau and approval from the People's Government of Yenjing, the ticket prices of some scenic spots in Yenjing City were adjusted, but the increase was still not significant, usually from 5 cents to 1.2 yuan. Strictly speaking, after the implementation of the A and B type ticket integration system in Huagua tourist attractions, the ticket prices of tourist attractions in Beijing began to gradually increase after 1996. It is worth mentioning that at this time in Yenjing, the main means of transportation on the road were bicycles, followed by yellow faces, as well as Xiaoli, Santana, and buses. Jiang Xiaofeng and Xiaoli, due to their limited financial resources, chose to take a 50-cent bus as their means of transportation no matter which scenic spot they went to. However, due to the large size of Yenjing, Jiang Xiaofeng and Xiaoli spent most of their time on transportation. In addition, the scenic area is also large, and any visit to a scenic area would take up one morning or one afternoon. Therefore, after two days, Jiang Xiaofeng and Xiao Li only went to the Forbidden City, Yuan Minjiwen, Hohai, and Gulu. It is worth mentioning that the two places of Hohai and Gulu were actively recommended by Xiao Li to Jiang Xiaofeng. Hohai is said to be a sea, but in fact, it is a huge artificial lake, a clear pool exclusively enjoyed by the royal family in the old days. At this time, Hohai was not as crowded with bars as it was later. Along the beach, there were people carrying cages and birds, practicing tai chi, practicing round horns, practicing black pipes, raising their voices among ticket holders, and selling along the streets. It was not the kind of pedestrian overpass occupied by Tian Tanjiwen, but the kind of street side streets where bicycles were strung through alleys. At this moment, the various sounds from Hohai made Jiang Xiaofeng close his eyes and instantly know that this was Yenjing. The reason why Xiao Li recommended Jiang Xiaofeng to go to the drum tower is quite pure, mainly to see the girls. Monk, let me tell you this. If you want to see the local girls in Yenjing, the best age group of Yenjing local girls, and experience why local girls in Beijing are so popular, there is no second choice. Come with me to the bell and drum tower. 
After listening to Xiao Li's words, Jiang Xiaofeng followed Xiao Li to the bell and drum tower without saying a word. The bell and drum tower is composed of two floors, the bell tower and the drum tower, which complement each other and perform their respective duties. The bell and drum tower was a public building used in ancient China to manage the times. The bell and drum were originally ancient musical instruments, but later used for reporting the times. Gulu Street is a street in Beijing that is full of the charm of an ancient capital. The ancient architectural style shops and bustling pedestrians on both sides of the street make the street filled with a thick atmosphere of human fireworks. To Jiang Xiaofeng's disappointment, Xiao Li was exaggerating a bit. There were not many Yanjing girls walking around the drum tower, but there were quite a few Beijing aunties and elders. However, this trip to the drum tower gave Jiang Xiaofeng inspiration and reminded him of a folk song he had heard in his past life, which was Zhao Lei's Drum Tower. A few days after returning from the drum tower, Jiang Xiaofeng made his first attempt at creating, copying, works, inheriting. He wrote his own lyrics and composition, and created his first song in life. Drum Tower After creating the lyrics and music for the song, Drum Tower, Jiang Xiaofeng began to hold his guitar, take out a pen and paper, and arrange the music for the song. Generally speaking, if you only want to play songs with simple chords and rhythms, it can be done in a month or two. For those with talent, it can be done in a week. If you want to play CDFGAB songs with accompaniment, including some slightly more complex solos, and the sound quality is good, guitar skills are generally good, and the music feels good, then it will take at least a year or more. This is probably the master, in the eyes of beginners, and many people who have played guitar for several years are also at this level. Jiang Xiaofeng is quite talented. After a few days of tinkering with drums, he managed to complete the arrangement of the song, Drum Tower, and even started playing and singing it himself. Although his skills and rhythm were a bit unfamiliar, he was at least able to fully sing the song, Drum Tower. After learning the song, Drum Tower, Jiang Xiaofeng asked Xiao Li to come to his room and listen to his playing and singing. I walk under the drum tower the road is blocked sunshine scattered after rain people have all come out persistent and confused there are many literary and artistic youths if I'm bored, I'll come here to sit down. This is Xiao Li's first time listening to the song, Drum Tower. When he saw Jiang Xiaofeng playing and singing, he felt quite decent. At least it wasn't unpleasant, and he could also hear what he was singing. I am a silent passerby leaning against the wall to bask in the sun if I feel a bit tired let me wake up here alone I am standing above the drum tower all the prosperity has nothing to do with me this is a crowded place but I am very ordinary. After singing the song, Drum Tower, Jiang Xiaofeng asked Xiao Li, how do you feel about my singing? Xiao Li said truthfully, just be careless, you can listen. When Xiao Li learned that the song, Drum Tower, performed by Jiang Xiaofeng was composed and written by him, he was also shocked and surprised by Yu Yu reading at www.yuyukangshu.net. However, Xiao Li did not doubt Jiang Xiaofeng's creativity, as it was he who personally took Jiang Xiaofeng to the Drum Tower, and Jiang Xiaofeng returned to create the song, Drum Tower. Xiao Li couldn't help but sigh and say, Monk, you are really a genius. You have only been learning guitar for a few days, less than a month, right? You can actually write songs by yourself, and the key is not bad. Why don't I have this ability? It seems that I am still suitable to be a landlord who doesn't know anything. Before Jiang Xiaofeng could answer, Xiao Li continued, To be honest, your guitar isn't playing very well and your singing is average, but your song is written quite like that. How about this? You take this song to the record company and see if you can sell it for some money. In fact, in Jiang Xiaofeng's impression, the song, Drum Tower, is just a niche and unpopular song, and it is basically impossible for it to become popular. If he wants to sing it, he will sing the kind of song that can become popular. Drum Tower is just an attempt he made with emotion. Jiang Xiaofeng didn't originally intend to release the song, Drum Tower, and felt unsatisfied. He didn't want to sell the song either. 
he mainly wanted to practice his guitar skills and consider selling it once he had mastered it. Moreover, after practicing Drum Tower for a few days, Jiang Xiaofeng also felt that this song was quite boring. It would be more practical to sell it to a record company and earn some money to come back. Xiao Li continued, I know a record company called Dotty or something. You can try it out there. Jiang Xiaofeng was also curious whether the song, Drum Tower, could sell well, so he nodded and said, Okay, I'll try it out tomorrow. P.S. Thank you to my friend, Time1979, for your encouragement and support. A new week, a new beginning. Please collect, reward, recommend, receive monthly passes, and offer all kinds of love. Thank you all. Chapter 8 Selling Songs and Negotiating with Gold Medal Producers You are listening at NovelFull.audio The next day, early in the morning. Jiang Xiaofeng carried his guitar, picked up the sheet music, took a bus, and headed to Dotty Records Company. Dotty Records Company is a record company registered in Xiangjiang. It was first founded by famous musician Lu Zhuohui and his friends in Xiangjiang in 1990. Because Lu Zhuohui was the main lyricist for the famous band Beyond in Xiangjiang, and one of the most famous songs, The Earth, was written by Lu Zhuohui, he used The Earth when he founded the record company. It is worth mentioning that Dotty was one of the earliest signed mainland singers by Xiangjiang Records, and the first signed singer was Chang Quan. Soon, Jiang Xiaofeng arrived at Dotty Records, and Lu Zhuohui happened to be away from Yanjing. The receptionist for Jiang Xiaofeng was Huang Xiaomao, the director and producer of Dotty Records. Chui Jian's 1986 release of The Wanderer Returns and A.I. Jing's 1992 release of My 1997 were all produced by Huang Xiaomao. However, to be honest, the lyrics and music of the song My 1997 are not very good, especially the lyrics, which are really tacky and low, written like a drool song with a flowing account. Huang Xiaomao was wearing a pair of black framed glasses, looking gentle, with a slightly dull gaze and a somewhat innocent smile. After greeting, Jiang Xiaofeng didn't beat around the bush and clearly explained his purpose. To sell songs. Huang Xiaomao didn't expect Jiang Xiaofeng to be so direct. He smiled and asked, Do you have a sample with a song coming over? Jiang Xiaofeng said calmly, No, I didn't record a sample. I want to sing it live for you. Huang Xiaomao nodded and said, Okay, then you can sing, I'll listen. Jiang Xiaofeng was in Huang Xiaomao's office and played the song, Drum Tower, for him. I walk under the drum tower the road is blocked sunshine scattered after rain people have all come out I am standing by the seaside in Shisha all sweetness has nothing to do with me this is a crowded place but I am very lonely I'm in the drum tower, I'm in the drum tower I'm in the drum tower, I'm in the drum tower. After listening to Jiang Xiaofeng's self-playing and self-singing song, Drum Tower, Huang Xiaomao showed a pleased smile and asked, Are you sure this song was originally written by yourself? Jiang Xiaofeng replied, Of course it's my original work. After receiving a positive answer from Jiang Xiaofeng, Huang Xiaomao nodded and said, Hmm, it's written very well. How much do you plan to sell it for? You can offer a price. Jiang Xiaofeng really didn't consider this issue because he didn't know how much the song, Drum Tower, could sell for, nor was he clear about the current market situation. Jiang Xiaofeng asked in response, Teacher Huang, how much do you think this song can be worth? After pondering for a moment, Huang Xiaomao said, If you really want to sell it, I'll give you 1,000 yuan. You can sing this song yourself. Jiang Xiaofeng thinks that the price of 1,000 yuan is reasonable because he is not a well-known musician himself, but he does not intend to sing the song, Drum Tower, on his own. It's not that Jiang Xiaofeng doesn't like the song, Drum Tower, it's mainly because Jiang Xiaofeng feels that his first song must strive to become popular overnight. Thinking of this, Jiang Xiaofeng replied, Teacher Huang, just give me 1,000 yuan. As for the song, Drum Tower, I won't get involved with anyone you like to sing. Upon hearing Jiang Xiaofeng's words, 
Wang Xiaomao had already guessed that Jiang Xiaofeng's creations were somewhat preserved, and he must have had better works to come up with. Huang Xiaomao could also see that Jiang Xiaofeng's life was a bit difficult now, otherwise he wouldn't have come out to sell songs. He immediately asked, Xiao Jiang, do you have any other works? If you have better works, why not take them out and listen to them? I will offer you a higher price based on the quality of the works. Jiang Xiaofeng pondered for a moment and said, Teacher Huang, to be honest, I do have better works on hand than, Drum Tower, Dot. But now, all I want to do is sell this song. You just said you sold it to your company for 1,000 yuan, isn't it fake? Huang Xiaomao replied, Of course it's not fake. If we say 1,000 yuan, it's 1,000 yuan, and we won't lose you a penny. With Huang Xiaomao's words, Jiang Xiaofeng finally felt at ease and continued, Teacher Huang, how about this? After I finish organizing my work in a while, I'll come find you. Since Jiang Xiaofeng had already said this, Huang Xiaomao couldn't say anything more and could only nod in agreement. However, Huang Xiaomao still cherishes his talents. He believes that the song, Drum Tower, created by Jiang Xiaofeng has a folk feeling and a unique style. Although Jiang Xiaofeng's singing skills are average and he is also very unfamiliar with playing the guitar, overall, flaws do not hide the beauty. Huang Xiaomao still greatly appreciates Jiang Xiaofeng's creative talent. Huang Xiaomao also took this opportunity to have a serious conversation with Jiang Xiaofeng about his idea of making a folk album. Originally, Huang Xiaomao planned to record a folk album called Campus Folk. The songs on this album were all written by people who used to be on campus and those who had already left the school gate. Each song was a memory of their own youth. It can be seen from here that Campus Folk is not a music genre, but a brand of Dottie Records. After understanding Huang Xiaomao's thoughts, Jiang Xiaofeng was also moved and confidently said to Huang Xiaomao, Teacher Huang, wait for my good news, I will definitely come back to you with my best work. Huang Xiaomao smiled and replied, All right, you can go to the recording studio first and help us record a sample. After recording the sample, you can go to the finance room to get some change. No problem. Subsequently, Jiang Xiaofeng went to the recording studio and, under the guidance of Huang Xiaomao, spent a morning recording a demo of the song, Drum Tower, also known as a song sample. After recording the demo of, Drum Tower, Jiang Xiaofeng also successfully received a copyright income of 1,000 yuan. That evening, Jiang Xiaofeng, who had earned his first bucket of gold and returned, specially invited Xiao Li to go to Wang Fujing to eat McDonald's together. This McDonald's was the first store opened by McDonald's in Wang Fujing, Yanjing in 1992. The store has a large area and is one of the top McDonald's stores in the world. It has nearly 800 seats and 30 cash registers, indicating its scale. As the first McDonald's store in Yanjing, the Wang Fujing store is quite fashionable in terms of decoration style and menu design these days. As long as you purchase a package in the store, you can get a complimentary cartoon toy, which is very attractive to children. Being able to sit with the Joker uncle on the bench in the store is already satisfying. If you could take another photo, it would be really worth showing off. For many people born in the 1980s in Yanjing, this Wang Fujing McDonald's restaurant can be said to be a beautiful childhood memory. However, this is not the first McDonald's in China, as Shenzhen already had its first McDonald's in 1990. When it comes to McDonald's, it's hard not to think of KFC. The first KFC in Beijing was even earlier than McDonald's. As early as November 20, 1987, in the front door of Yanjing, the first KFC restaurant opened grandly, becoming the first Western fast food brand to enter China. UU Reading www.uukangshu.net was also the first KFC in China. On the first day of operation at KFC Qianmen Restaurant, a customer ordered China's first KFC set meal, which included two pieces of finger-sucking original chicken, small meal buns, chicken sauce mashed potatoes, and shredded vegetable salad. This store is also quite long-lived and continues to operate for more than 30 years.
It is known as the KFC's first Chinese restaurant and has also witnessed the development history of Chinese fast food. Seeing Jiang Xiaofeng's generous gesture today and inviting himself to McDonald's, Xiao Li curiously asked, Monk, how much did your song sell for? Jiang Xiaofeng took a sip of iced cola and asked with a smile, guess what? After thinking for a moment, Xiao Li tentatively asked, 200 yuan, or 300 yuan? Can't it be 500 yuan, right? It is said that wealth is not revealed, and wealth is not revealed. Jiang Xiaofeng felt that he should keep a low profile and not be too flamboyant, so he deceived him by saying, how could there be 500 yuan? I am not a famous musician. If a song can sell for 2 to 300, it is considered very good. Xiao Li thought it was reasonable, and Jiang Xiaofeng was also interested. As soon as he made money, he treated himself to McDonald's and didn't continue to ask. He ate French fries and hamburgers in large gulps, and drank iced cola. Jiang Xiaofeng ate a hamburger, added chicken wings, French fries, and cola, and was already 7 or 8 percent full. He began to ponder in his heart what to write for his next song. Originally, Jiang Xiaofeng planned to debut after mastering his guitar. Now that he has the opportunity to publish his work, he naturally doesn't want to miss it easily. P.S. Thank you to the book enthusiast Time 1979 for your encouragement and appreciation. I am deeply moved and grateful to every old reader who has supported this book. Thank you. Chapter 9 Second audition, confirmed to participate in Jiang Wen's new film. You are listening at NovelFull.audio At 10 p.m. Jiang Xiaofeng and Xiao Li, who were full of food and drink, took the bus back to the courtyard and then went back to their respective residences. The house where Jiang Xiaofeng lives is quite large, about 30 square meters long. Of course, only 15 square meters can be used, and the roof of the other 15 square meters is covered with holes of all sizes, with the largest diameter being half a meter long. So, on clear nights, Jiang Xiaofeng looked up and could always see the stars in the sky. When it rains, as Guo Di Gang said, there is light rain outside and moderate rain inside, it's raining outside, and it's raining heavily inside, it's raining outside, it's time to go out and take shelter. When it starts to snow in Yanjing, this house will definitely no longer be habitable, so it will only be a matter of time before Jiang Xiaofeng leaves here. Jiang Xiaofeng lay in bed, tossing and turning, unable to sleep, constantly pondering in her heart which song would be more suitable for her next song. Moreover, Huang Xiaomao has already told Jiang Xiaofeng that if he wants to produce an album called Campus Folk, Jiang Xiaofeng can only choose one folk song from the folk songs he has heard before. In Jiang Xiaofeng's memories of his past life, he has heard many folk songs, including Miss Dong, South Mountain South, Southern Girl, and Ideal 30, with at least 20.30 songs. Of course, in Jiang Xiaofeng's mind, the ceiling of mainland folk songs is definitely composed and written by Gao Xiaosong and sung by Lao Lang, as it is a popular folk classic across the country. There are other folk songs and good works, but most of them are niche folk songs, making it difficult for them to truly make a name for themselves like, Sitting With You. On the other hand, Jiang Xiaofeng is also uncertain whether, You at the same table, has been created, and he dare not rashly plagiarize this song. However, it is not an easy task to select a song from so many folk songs that can be compared to the song, Sitting With You. Just as Jiang Xiaofeng was struggling to decide what song to write next, he suddenly received a notice from the crew of, Sunny Days, asking him to report on the show. When Jiang Xiaofeng arrives on the set, not to mention people, there won't even be a ghost. At noon, everyone went to eat. Jiang Xiaofeng was idle and bored, and the sun was shining brightly. Soon, he felt a bit drowsy. After an unknown amount of time, the sound of slippers kicking and pulling came closer and closer. Jiang Xiaofeng had just opened his eyes when Jiang Wen appeared in front of him. Short sleeves, big shorts, slippers, still chewing on the food that hasn't been swallowed. Compared to the last time he shaved his head, 
Jiang Xiaofeng's hair has grown out, with a refreshing and short head. He looks carefree and free, but Jiang Wen still calls him Monk one by one. Jiang Wen suddenly remembered something and asked, Monk, do you have abdominal muscles? Jiang Xiaofeng asked in confusion, Yes, director. What's wrong? Jiang Wen said without a doubt, Take off your clothes and let me take a look. Upon hearing Jiang's words, Jiang Xiaofeng felt the chrysanthemums tighten, but he only hesitated for a moment before obediently taking off his black short sleeves. Jiang Wen couldn't help but brighten his eyes and exclaimed with a smile, Oh, you really have abdominal muscles, or the six-pack abdominal muscles. It seems like you haven't practiced much in your daily life, you. Jiang Xiaofeng has always been very confident in his body shape. His figure belongs to the type that looks thin when dressed and has flesh when undressed. Ordinary girls can't bear it, only his sister or aunt can handle it. In front of Jiang Xiaofeng's perfect six-pack abs, rough men like Jiang Wen couldn't restrain themselves anymore and reached out to touch his abs. Jiang Wen couldn't help but exclaim, Oh my, I'll go. It's very sexy. It's very sexy. Very sexy, these three words are enough to describe Jiang Wen's admiration for Jiang Xiaofeng. However, being teased by an old man like this made Jiang Xiaofeng feel awkward and strange, with goosebumps popping up. In theory, an old man like Jiang Wen, with a hormonal aura all over his body, should be a safe and pure man, not as good as Long Yang. Female writer Yi San once described Jiang Wen as a man with a lifelong excess of hormones, and she couldn't even imagine the latter not playing the role of a straight man, because Jiang Wen looked so majestic that she had nowhere to go about castration. Jiang Wen was very satisfied with Jiang Xiaofeng's figure and then asked, Have you ever had a fight? Jiang Xiaofeng didn't hide it either. To be honest, I fought. Jiang Wen nodded and said, All right, it's just you. You stay. Jiang Wen has decided to let Jiang Xiaofeng play a child named Lu Iku in the movie, Sunny Days, which can be considered as the second male lead in the movie. Jiang Xiaofeng doesn't know how to act, it's okay. Jiang Wen loves raw melon and egg, but the character Lu Iku must be able to fight. In Jiang Wen's opinion, Jiang Xiaofeng, with his tall stature and a masculine and handsome face, has not only practiced martial arts but also fought, making him the perfect fit to play Lu Iku. In the first movie, Jiang Xiaofeng was able to play the second male lead, and he still played the classic work Sunshine Day, that can leave a lasting impression on history. What else can Jiang Xiaofeng be dissatisfied with? The only thing Jiang Xiaofeng wants to know now is how much he earns for his role in this movie, so he directly asked Jiang Wen, Director, may I ask, how much is my salary? Jiang Wen didn't beat around the bush and told Jiang Xiaofeng directly, Monk, if you're willing to take on this drama, I'll offer you a film fee of 5,000 yuan. Jiang Xiaofeng felt that the drum tower he had spent so much time tinkering with only sold for 1,000 yuan. Now, as the second male lead in a play, it's worth 5,000 yuan, which is quite worthwhile. It should be noted that in 1992, the average annual salary of urban employees in China was only 2,711 yuan. Jiang Xiaofeng could earn 5,000 yuan for a single film, which exceeded that of most ordinary employees in the company. Finding this place, Jiang Xiaofeng clearly felt a bit tempted, and then asked, how long will this play be filmed? Jiang Wen thought for a moment and said, under normal circumstances, it should be around three months. Jiang Xiaofeng pondered in his heart that if he were to film a play every three months, on average, there would be around 1,700 yuan per month. Such a good deal, he had no reason to refuse. Okay, I'll take it. Jiang Wen was not surprised by Jiang Xiaofeng's decision and casually handed him the script for Sunny Days, saying, Go back and take a good look. Jiang Xiaofeng then asked, Director, when can we start filming this movie? This really caught Jiang Wen off guard because Jiang Wen didn't know when the movie would start filming. He could only tell Jiang Xiaofeng, We'll have to wait a little longer. It should be fast, and we'll notify you then. Okay. Then I'll go back. 
After returning to the courtyard, Jiang Xiaofeng stopped practicing the piano and locked himself in the room to read the script of A Sunny Day. It is worth mentioning that the script for the movie Sunny Days is adapted from Wang Shua's novel Animal Fierce, written by Jiang Wen. At first, Jiang Wen didn't want to become a screenwriter. Just as he finished filming The Year of Our Own Life, he said to Lu Xiaoqing, I want to study directing in the United States. Lu Xiaoqing also candidly told him, Directors are not learned, they are done. You need to be a director early, and when you have passion, it is easy to produce works. CFA, Tian Zhuizhang, and Zhang Yimou all encouraged him, and Jiang Wan began to search for good novels everywhere. He had read Qi Li's You Are a River and Su Tong's Red Powder, but failed to secure the copyright. Wang Shua gave Animal Fury to Jiang Wan at the end of 1991. He didn't care much and seemed to be talking about something else. He casually gave it to Jiang Wen and said, that's it. You can take it back and watch it. Jiang Wen also casually brought it over and continued to talk to Wang Shua about other things. It was already late at home, around 1 o'clock in the morning. Yu Yu reading www.yuyukangshu.net that night, in a building on Shiba River on North Third Ring Road East, Jiang Wen always wanted to see something before going to bed. He picked up his book Animal Fierce, given by Wang Shua and finished it in one breath. He was so excited that he almost couldn't sleep. The visuals, sounds, and even smells all rushed into his mind. Jiang Wen thought at the time that it should be made into a movie, so he asked himself, why didn't Wang Shua just say it? Why did you use this to make a movie? In fact, at that time, Wang Shua regarded Animal Fierce as a bottom-dot-up job and did not want to easily make promises to others. Wang Shua took advantage of Jiang Wen's talent and his background in the courtyard before handing over Animal Fierce to him. At first, Jiang Wen wanted Wang Shua to change the script into a movie, but Wang Shua refused to work hard. At that time, he was already disgusted by writing scripts, which greatly damaged his creative desire. I am especially afraid of writing scripts for directors who have aspirations, and the painful experience is unbearable to look back on. After a period of time, Wang Shua simply said to him, It is said that selecting a virtuous person does not avoid kinship, and I don't recommend anyone else. I will recommend you. It's best for you to write this thing yourself and grow it from your own heart. In May 1992, in a six-dot-square-dot-meter cottage on the Shiba River, Jiang Wen listened to The Country Night while shifting his thoughts back to the 1970s, completely isolated from the world. Apart from eating and sleeping, he also wrote scripts. A month and a half later, the 60,000-word Animal Fierce was written as the initial draft of 70,000 words, and the second draft was written as 90,000 words. Wang Shua took a look at the script and couldn't help but exclaim, It's amazing that I've been fooling around for so long. Sometimes I do deceive the world and steal fame. This is the famous monologue in the history of Chinese cinema. At that time, it was always summer, and the sun always came out to accompany us. The sunshine was abundant and too bright, making our eyes darken in waves. Chapter 10 Creating another masterpiece, this song is amazing. You are listening at NovelFull.audio After the completion of the script for Sunny Days, Jiang Wen specifically wrote Lu Xiaoqing's name in the screenwriting column, but was rejected by Lu Xiaoqing. Whoever writes is who writes. I never take credit for what I have. Jiang Wen felt embarrassed again and said, Although the female lead was written according to your model, I'm afraid you can't play it. Lu Xiaoqing replied directly, What's the matter? I'm doing it for your success, not because I want to act on my own. Behind a successful man, there is indeed a need for a great woman. For Jiang Wen, Lu Xiaoqing is such a woman. Like Li Tianran in the later film Evil Suppresses Justice, Li Tianran has been looking for various reasons to avoid revenge. Waiting for the right time, and having two people together for revenge is enough to be happy. As a result, Guan Xiaohong, played by Zhou Yun, retorted, 
why can't you kill one first and then another? Li Tianran's maturity is largely due to the woman Guan Xiaohong. In Jiang Wen's heart, there is always a woman behind the process of a boy becoming a man. The first woman to make Jiang Wen mature was undoubtedly Lu Xiaoqing. Due to Jiang Wen being immersed in excitement at the time, he thought everyone was just as excited as him, but in fact, they were all very calm. Therefore, after the script was written, he couldn't find an investment. Unable to find the investment, Jiang Wen had to regain his actor status and go to the United States to film The People of Beijing in New York. But Lu Xiaoqing, who had already gone into business at that time, was not idle. At that time, he couldn't say a few words to his business opponents, so he talked about Jiang Wen's movies and lied, saying, the female lead in this movie is me. Lu Xiaoqing is very shrewd in this aspect, and with her position in the film and television industry at that time, undoubtedly, she has plated a large layer of gold for movies. However, many people are willing to spend money to hire Jiang Wen to act, but no one believes that he can become a director. Finally, Lu Xiaoqing dialed the phone of someone, who was Wen Jun. Lu Xiaoqing first got to know Wen Jun through Jiang Wen. At that time, there was a co-production film between mainland China and Xiangjiang called The Heroes of Narrow Roads, starring Jiang Wen and Wan Ziliang. The director and screenwriter of this movie is Wen Jun. During the collaboration, the two heroes sympathized with each other. Wen Jun called Jiang Wen a 100% film enthusiast. Jiang called Wen Jun a very good person from Xiangjiang. After seeing Wen Jun, Lu Xiaoqing didn't get straight to the point and only said, Jiang Wen wants to direct a film, but I don't know which Hong Kong film company to collaborate with. Wen Jun was unaware of its meaning and carefully analyzed the form of the Xiangjiang film industry. They would be happy to invite Jiang Wen to film, but when asked to become a director, probably none of the bosses would be willing. As a director, it no longer involves issues of over a million or so, but rather over a million or so. Those bosses hope to shoot commercial films, when Jun said slowly. Lu Xiaoqin was extremely anxious and lied to him, saying, Actually, Jiang Wen and I would most like to collaborate with you. After hearing this sentence, Wen Jun was also very excited and felt that he agreed very decisively. Okay, I'll invest. However, in fact, as soon as he finished speaking this sentence, Wen Jun was stunned at the time. Where am I going to make money? Wen Jun couldn't help but think. However, Wen Jun ultimately decided to invest. On April 17, 1993, energetic Wen Jun held a financing press conference for Sunny Days in Xiangjiang. At the Sunshine fundraising event, Wen Jun stood up and made a resounding sound, investing in Jiang Wen should be cost.effective. He is widely recognized as the most talented male celebrity in China, with a popularity far beyond everyone's imagination. There is also Lu Xiaoqing, who has volunteered as a volunteer director, and he is a well-known figure in mainland China. If we invest money, we should consider it not in the film, but in them, and the return will definitely be worth it. Regardless of whether others believe it or not, Wen Jun himself believed it. After the press conference, Wen Jun and Lu Xiaoqing began to split up and continue to attract investment for the movie Sunny Day. On the other hand, Jiang Xiaofeng was either studying the script in the courtyard or considering which folk song he would choose as his debut song. After careful consideration, Jiang Xiaofeng ultimately chose the song, Those Flowers, among many folk songs. In fact, choosing the song, Those Flowers, as his debut work, Jiang Xiaofeng felt somewhat guilty in his heart. Because in this lifetime, Jiang Xiaofeng spent most of his time at Shaolin Temple, and the time he left Shaolin Temple was only over a month in total. That is to say, based on Jiang Xiaofeng's life experience, under normal circumstances, he would not encounter so many girls in his life, and it would be difficult for him to create the song, Those Flowers. However, Jiang Xiaofeng felt that he was only a martial arts practitioner, not a true monk who ate fast and recited Buddhism. Even when he was at Shaolin Temple, it was not impossible for him to fall in love with the girls at the foot of the mountain. 
Moreover, in the memories of his past life, Jiang Xiaofeng also truly loved the song, Those Flowers, believing that it was a classic work that was sad, yet also made people feel sad and warm. In Jiang Xiaofeng's view, the song, Those Flowers, is very well done in terms of lyrics, music, and even arrangement. Although the popularity and influence of the song, Those Flowers, may not be as good as Old Wolf's, You at the Same Table, it can definitely be called a classic folk song that can be mastered. After confirming the song, Those Flowers, Jiang Xiaofeng began to take out his pen and paper seriously in his own room, start composing and writing lyrics, and then spent more than a week arranging the music for this song. Of course, with Jiang Xiaofeng's current guitar level and near zero musical literacy, it is difficult for him to do the arrangement work well. Like the arrangement when creating, Drum Tower, Jiang Xiaofeng can only create the simplest guitar arrangement based on his past life memories. Immediately after, Jiang Xiaofeng spent a few days trying to play and sing the song, Those Flowers, by herself. What made Jiang Xiaofeng quite frustrated was that Xiao Li, who was approaching the college entrance examination, not only lacked any academic pressure or tension, but also had to come to his room every night to sit and chat, which seriously affected Jiang Xiaofeng's practice of the song, Those Flowers. Jiang Xiaofeng didn't think it was a big problem to disturb her singing practice. The key is that Xiao Li, her grandson, is about to take the college entrance examination and still fools around with her every day. She was also worried that Xiao Li might not be able to get into college, so she earnestly said to him, Xiao Li, why don't you read some books? Don't you really miss college when the time comes? Xiao Li said disapprovingly, if you can't pass the exam, then you can't pass it. What's the big deal? It's like someone who rarely reads it. I've thought about it for a long time. I'll just be like my parents and be a landlord in the future. I feel that in my lifetime, as long as I don't get involved in gambling drugs and rely on my large courtyard, I will collect the rent of you people every month, ensuring that you have no worries about food and clothing. Since Xiao Li has already said this, Jiang Xiaofeng is too lazy to say anything more about him because he also believes that what Xiao Li said makes sense. You should know that in the capital city, where every inch of land is precious, or in the large courtyard on the second ring road, Xiao Li has already surpassed more than 90% of his peers in the country before entering society. After practicing new song accompaniment for a few days, Jiang Xiaofeng felt that his skills were quite proficient. He happened to lack an audience, so he played and sang the song, Those Flowers, in front of Xiao Li. The laughter reminded me of my flowers in every corner of my life quietly open it for me I thought I would always stay by her side we have already left today amidst the vast sea of people. As soon as Jiang Xiaofeng spoke, Xiao Li was suppressed by Jiang Xiaofeng's deep and sad singing. Compared to, Drum Tower, this song sung by Jiang Xiaofeng is obviously more emotional and heartfelt, giving people a sense of storytelling. Some stories haven't been told yet then forget it those emotions in the years it's already difficult to distinguish between true and false nowadays, this place is overgrown with weeds without flowers fortunately, I once had your spring and autumn, as well as winter and summer, are they all old now where are they were just like this go to the ends of the earth separately la 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 miss her. Although Xiao Li's favorite singer is Dou Wei and his favorite music genre is rock, he was deeply moved by Jiang Xiaofeng's folk style song after listening to it. May I ask, who hasn't encountered many flowers in their youth? Looking at the score drawn on Jiang Xiaofeng's paper, Xiao Li turned his head and asked with uncertainty, Monk, don't tell me, this song was also written by yourself. Jiang Xiaofeng smiled and replied, you guessed it right. This song is indeed mine. How do you feel? Is it okay? Xiao Li exclaimed excitedly, this is no longer a question of whether you can do it or not. You are simply too good. I can only evaluate it in two words. Awesome. 